Here we have a financial maths question. So we are told that Tabor wanted to save 450,000 Rand as a deposit to buy a house on 30 June 2018. He deposits a fixed amount of money at the end of each month. Okay, so this is definitely um, a grade 12 question. Now, I'm going to break every question up into individual questions on each slide just to keep it neater and to give us more space to work. They tell us that he deposits a fixed amount of money at the end of every month into an account earning interest rate. Okay, so we've got our interest rate there. His first deposit is made on 31 July and his 60th deposit on 30 June. Calculate the amount of the amount he deposited monthly. Okay, so some learners, they read these val these numbers and they think, hmm, I think they're trying to trick me here. And I can tell you that in 85 to 90% of the time, it's they're not trying to trick you. What you must remember though, with, um, with grade 12 uh, future value, present value, is the following. If the person is compounding monthly, okay, then the first payment must always take place after one month. Sometimes it doesn't, but then we need to make a little modification. But this is the way it should work normally. So the first payment must always be made after one month, and the last payment should always be made right at the end, at the very end, at the very end. Okay, so let's see if that person does this. So this person opens the account on 30 June. Okay, so when should the first payment be done? Well, it should be done in a month from then. So yeah, you might say, yeah, but isn't that 30 July then? But um, but it's because June has 30 days, okay? So June has 30 days and then July has 31. So they're doing it at the end of the month. So they've this person has taken a whole month. That's perfect. So they did that one. And then, and then uh, sorry, he didn't open the account on 30 June. He would have opened the account on 30, 30 June. 2013. We can assume that and then he makes his first payment on the 31st of July, which would be the one month later. So that's the, this is the perfect scenario and then he makes his last payment um, on 30 June 2018. So he makes the last payment right at the end. So there's nothing funny about this question. Right, now to work out the number of payments, because it's just the normal scenario, from 2013, sorry, uh, to 2018, that's five years, and he's compounding monthly. So his number of payments would just be five times 12. You don't need to minus anything, you don't need to plus anything, because this person is following the normal standard approach. They're not trying to catch us out at all over here. So, okay, now we need to decide if it's a future value or um, or a present value question. So Tabo wanted to save, um, he wants to have 450,000 Rand in 2018, but when did he open his account? He opened his account on 2013. So when he opened his account in 2013, was he saving? Was he wanting the money for the future? Or did he want the money immediately? No. Well, I can't say no, I, that, that doesn't make sense. But <laughs> he opened his account in 2013, but he only wanted the money in 2018. So he only wanted the money in the future. Okay, so it's definitely a future value question. So we can write our future value formula down. All right, now everything's pretty standard. Um, how much money did he want? He wanted 450,000 Rand, so that's the future value. We don't know how much he paid every month. That's what we're trying to calculate. The interest rate was 8.35%. So I like to divide it by 100 automatically. Then I divide that by 12 because I said compounded monthly. The number of payments is just 5 times 12. Well, we can be technical here and say 5 times 12. Um, minus 1 over 0 0.0835 over 12. Everything's standard in this question. They did not try to trick us. Now to get X alone, I like to do it all in one step. So I'm going to go like this. So I'm going to say 450,000. Then I'm going to multiply that by this. So what I did is I took that over, over, or divide by. And then I'm just going to divide by all of this. See, I don't touch my calculator for now. There we go. And then I would go type it in my calculator just like that. And if we do that, we get a value of x4 or as 6,068 rand and 69 cents. 
Now here's the next part. So it says that Tavo bought a house. Now some of you reading this, you're like, okay, now what the heck is going on? Is this dude buying a house for 450,000 or is the house 1.5 million? Guys, the house itself is this much, but sometimes when you buy a house in real life, the bank asks you for a deposit. A deposit is like a an amount of money that you give them in the very beginning. It's like a bit of a safety thing for the banks. They don't want to be able to, they don't want to give you all the money for the house. They want you to also give a little bit. It's more safe for them, okay? So this part here is just the deposit. That's not the total value of the house. The total value of the house is this much. But he's going to use his savings as the deposit. So on the day when Tabo buys the house, he's going to he's going to ask the bank for the um he's the the, the, the house is worth 1.5 million, but he's going to give the bank 450,000 immediately, okay? And the rest of the money that is the loan. That is the money that the bank is going to lend him, okay? So it's like this. The house is worth 1.5 million. Um Tabo is going to pay off 450,000 rand of that. So how much money does he actually need from the bank? Well, if you minus those two values, then the amount that the amount that the bank is going to lend Tabo would be a million and um 50,000. That's how much the that's how much the loan is actually going to be. He's already paid off the 450,000. I hope that makes sense. So this is the total value of house. This is was his deposit. And so the leftover amount is how much he is for the loan. So he obtains a home loan for the balance. You see there the balance, that's this amount. And the bank gives him an interest rate over 25 years. So he's going to pay his house back to the bank over 25 years. That's pretty normal. Sometimes people get a 30-year loan in real life. Sometimes it's a 20-year loan. Um, he made his first monthly payment on 31 July. Okay, so everything's pretty standard over here. Okay, there's nothing funny. Now it says, what is the outstanding balance? Now, if you've watched some of my lessons, you know that there are two ways to calculate outstanding balance. Okay, OB for short. There is a present value method and there is a future value method. So in the present value method, you're literally just going to use the present value formula. Okay, but what you must remember is that this n, when you're using the present value method, is um, let's just say still need to make. Okay, then there's the out. Then there's the future value method, with which other types of learners enjoy. This one, you don't have to do both. Hey, some learners ask me, do we must we do both? No, no, you just do one, um, and you will not always get the exact same answer, but it'll always be like one or two or like a couple of cents off, like maybe 15 cents or 20 cents. It'll always be quite close. Okay, you'll see on the memos, the answers aren't the same for both methods every time. Okay, for the outstanding, for the for the OB, <laughs> for the future value method, you're going to use this formula now. So you're going to use like the grade 11 compound formula, and then you're going to minus that with the grade 12 future value formula. Okay, so can you see that? This is that grade 11 formula that goes like this. And then this is your future value formula. You know, F equals 2. That's, that's that one over there. So this is the other approach. But now when you use this one, then the N that you use is the number of payments that you have already made. Already made. That's the only difference between the two. Got it? So you can choose whichever method you prefer. So you see, for three marks, they're really not trying to catch us out here. So we know that he's been paying for 21 years. Okay, so how many years did he do this thing in total? 25 years. So if we use this method, then how many years does he still need to go? He still needs to go another four years. That doesn't mean you're going to put a four here. That means you're going to put a four times 12. So this would be four times 12. Okay, if you use if you use this one, then you look at how many years you've already gone. So how many years have you gone? 21 years. So then this n would be 21 times 12. But besides that, it doesn't matter which one you want to choose. So any mini money, I'm going to go with the one on the left. It's a little bit easier, not as much work. Um, and remember, this p is from your grade 12. I mean, 11 formula. Um, so it's like the starting amount. 
of the loan. Now what, now, actually, hmm, should I maybe do that one? Actually, let me do both. Let me do both. So with the present value method, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, the outstanding balance is equal to, now for the loan, they gave him a um, 11, I, I nearly used the 6,000 Rand value that we worked out earlier, but in that question, uh, this one here, that was some other type of account that he opened. That's just because he was trying to, he was trying to save up money. So that was a different investment. Okay. So for this one, there's a different value now that we're using. That's his monthly installment. So we're going to say 11058.85. And the interest rate for this compounding one is 12%. Now, remember we said that for this one, it's the amount of payments that you still need to make. Still need, I don't know why I erased that, still need to make. And then for these ends, it's um, payments already made. Payments already made. Okay, so the amount of money we still need to make, uh, we said that that was four years. Remember I said that just now, so that's four times 12. So we can say four times 12, but it's a negative. Okay, over 0 0.12, over 12. Go ahead, type this all in. And we get uh, four one nine nine four eight point three two four one nine nine four eight point three two. Okay, now we're going to look at the future value method. So if you are a student that doesn't like to use the future value method, then you do not need to watch this next part. Um, it's not necessary that you have to be able to show both. Okay, you only need to know one of them. So uh, let me let me now do the future value method. So in the future value method, this P is the loan amount. It's not the total, it's not the deposit, it's the loan amount. So that's going to be um, the 105 value, okay? The interest rate, I think I'm going to run out of space. Give me a second, please, guys. Okay, so I'm going to use the future value over here. So the outstanding balance then with, so the, the loan amount was the 105 value. And then the interest rate was 12%. And then this is the payments that have already been made, which is 21 years. So that's going to be 21 times 12. Then you're going to say minus. Now the monthly payment is 11058.85. And the interest rate is 12%. And this stays 21 times 12 minus 1 over 0 0.12 over 12. Then you go ahead and you type all of that in on the calculator. Might take a bit of time. And then we hope and pray that we get the same answer as we got earlier. Ha! We did. Okay, and as I said, it's not going to be exact. It's going to be a few cents off. And that's even like that on the memos. 419952.39. Whereas for the present value method, we got, um, we got 419952. Oh, it was a few rand off. Okay, that does happen too. I wouldn't expect that though. Nine, but it's like literally like four rand, guys. It's not bad, hey? Okay, so that's what we got um, in the present value. And this is what we got in the future value. But on the formula sheets, they make allowance for that. And I've just gone to go check on the memo now, and it's exactly the same. So the present value formula, we got the right answer, and the future value, we also got the right answer. So um, that does happen, okay? You get different values, right? With this next question, some learners find it a bit weird, but it's actually quite easy, and I'm going to do my best to just try to show you how it works. So what I want us to start off with is the following. So let's see, um, Tabo, let's see what his loan was worth in the very beginning. Okay, so in the beginning, um, how much money did, how much was the loan worth? Well, the loan was worth that much. So that's how much money he still owed the bank. Okay, then Tabo has been paying his loan off for how long? 21 years so far. That's how long he's been paying it for. And how much money? Does he still owe the bank? What is the loan? Well, did you know that that's what the balance outstanding is? The balance outstanding is um, how much he still owes on the loan. And we worked that out. Now, obviously, some people use the present value formula and some people use the future value formula. So I'll have to do both. Um, so for the 
Um, hmm, I don't want to confuse people. Okay, so okay, so if you use the present value, then uh, the present value method, then you would have um, his loan. Let me actually make this a bit smaller. His loan is still worth um, four one double nine four eight point three two. If you use the future value method, then it was four one double nine. 52.39. Okay, so that's how much is new, that's how much the loan is still worth. Okay, so have a look at this, guys. His loan was worth 1 point or 1 million and 50,000 rand. That's how much money he owes the bank. That's what a loan is. It's how much you own, you, you, you owe the bank. 21 years later, this is how much he still owes the bank. Now, let's see how much money Tabo has actually paid back to the bank. Let's see how much he's actually paid back. So how much has he paid the bank? Okay, so we know that he paid this amount of money every single month. So we times up by 12 to see how much he pays per year. And he did that for 21 years. So let's see how much money this guy has paid the bank. Okay, so he's paid the bank over 2 million rand. Some of you are like, Kevin, why would he pay back the bank more than, like, why would he pay, like, over 2 million rand when the loan's only that amount? Guys, when the bank gives you money, they make you pay back a lot more. That is because of interest. That's the interest. All right. So this is how much money Sabo has paid. So look at this, guys. Think about this carefully. Um, Tabo has paid the bank 2.7 million rand already but his loan amount has only gone down from 1.1 million and 50,000 and it's gone down to that much so how much has the loan decreased by well, let's see loan decreased well that would be the original loan amount minus what it is now so either present value Sorry, I'm not combining values here. So I'm going to have to use the future value method or present value. So if you use the present value and if you use the future value. Okay, so if you use the present value, then that's going to be... And that's going to give us... Okay, guys, I'm actually just going to do it using the present value method only because I'm running out of space like completely here. Um, so I'm just going to use the present value method, but you can follow along with the future value as well. I mean, it will be the exact same thing. Okay, so let's see how much the loan decreased by. So the loan decrease would be um, the 105 minus 41994.32. And that's going to be equal to 630051.68. So think about this very carefully. Tabo has paid the bank 2.7 million, over 2.7 million back. But his loan has only gone down by 630,000 Rand. So where did his money go? Like he's giving the, mo he's giving the bank 2.7 million Rand. And the bank person, the person at the bank says, oh, but your loan has only gone down by 630,000 Rand. Imagine that, guys. You pay the bank 2.7 million, but they tell you, oh, your, your loan has only gone down by 630,000. So where did all of his other money go? Is someone at the bank stealing it? No, that is interest. So not all of the money, not, not all of the money that he pays back to the bank gets used to take the loan down. Some of it is being used as just the interest, you see? So he paid 2.7 million back to the bank, but only 630,000 Rand was actually used to lower the, 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 the interest, I mean to lower the, the loan. The rest of the money is interest. How crazy is that? So the amount of interest that Tabo has used, it's almost like that money just disappeared, but that's what the interest is, it just disappears, is going to be 2786830.20 minus 6300511.68, and that gives us 2156778.52. If you use the future value method, your answer will be a little bit different. If you use the future value, so if used the future value 
then your answer would be okay so if you use the future value you should have get you should get two one five six seven eight two point five nine two one five six seven eight two point five nine